This is Evan from ConnectSmart, and today I'm going to walk you through how to install the ConnectSmart Trial Setup Wizard. You want to begin with having PowerShell 2.0 installed. There's a link there if you need it. Uh, if, it if you have Windows 7, that's included with it, so you don't need to download that. Also, you need the .NET Framework, uh, at least version 2.0. Uh, we've also included some links for Power Gadgets. If you haven't installed Power Gadgets, thus far you need to do so. We've got a 32-bit and 64-bit version along with a serial number. So uh, install that before proceeding. And just click Next and you can go through here, select a directory and then hit Continue. And this takes usually about a minute to do the complete install. And bear in mind that this is a workstation install. You don't have to do anything on the server. Uh, with the trial version it is uh, strictly workstation based so you can install this on any workstations you want the trial gadgets on. And there we have the installer completed. Um, for 64-bit systems I would recommend that you check this box because there are two steps you need to do to make your system compatible with 64-bit. Uh, so it's uh, you can follow the steps there. We have a README as well, which I would recommend you looking through. Uh, it has some uh, functions for the gadgets that you'll need to pay attention to. Uh, the newest feature is this Connect Smart Module Generator, so I'm going to leave that checked and show you how that works. Uh, this launches uh, our uh, preloaded module, which is here, Connections. So you want to click on that and hit Edit and how the module generator works all the gadgets look to one module for their data so um, uh, yours may time out once you hit that I've already filled in our server info but you're gonna want to put in your ConnectWise server your username and password username is going to be uh, any username with administrative rights to that database and then once that's filled in you'll have it'll populate this database field and you can select your uh, proper database then you click on the module details tab uh, in the drop down here on category uh, let's start with uh, location for example uh, depending on your company uh, some companies have different branches different locations uh, so you can add those if you need um, by doing like this uh, right now we're just gonna stick with one our main location so we're gonna keep but you can have more than one that's fine uh, you don't have to hit apply right away to commit the changes it'll remember what you have so let's go through and uh, let's try another one of these uh, modules here let's try let's go to ticket statuses <clears throat> before I do a change here I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up uh, actually let's try members for now we're gonna go to members and click on the engineering team and you see how we've got <clears throat> four engineers in the list uh, I'm gonna open up the gadget folder and hit the launch the dashboard batch file uh, incidentally you can edit this in notepad <clears throat> if you don't want the entire uh, dashboard coming up so we'll just edit that and you can take that line by line whichever one you don't you don't want in there and save it it's just a quick way to get a, a dashboard up and you can put that in your startup folder so every time your computer reboots that will launch your dashboard and you won't have to go clicking on different gadgets to have your dashboard populate okay so all the gadgets are up now there's usually some sort of tweaking you want to do uh, and that's what we've got the module generator for um, for example tickets over X days this is uh, I think set by default to be tickets over 30 days old right now with the current board set that it has it's not bringing in there are no tickets over 30 days so we're going to uh, change that to where uh, let's click on boards the function there and this one is looking at help desk boards that's found in the readme and let's just add a couple boards here a lot of boards and we'll add them over here and we'll hit apply and right away this is when it um, uh, appends to your connections module file and we can just do a refresh here and that will um, 
start bringing in data. So that's you just have to refresh the gadgets after you've made the change on the module generator and to to let them display the new new changes. Uh, another example, uh, let's go to let's see here. Tickets not assigned. I'm just going to drill down on this and see what we've got out there. The drill down will bring up the the outgrid. Um, one of the nice things about the outgrid is you can drag these columns up to the header and sort it by that that column. Uh, you can see here we've got um, a ready to order status. Uh, so say we don't we don't care about the tickets that are in a ready to order state. So I'm going to go back here under ticket statuses and we're going to click on the tickets not assigned status exclusion. So these on the right hand side are being ignored for the tickets not assigned gadget. So let's go here and we're going to look for the ready to order. We're going to add that to the list. And let's get him up here so you can see. It's in the background somewhere. There it is. Tickets not assigned. So we've got him up in the front and I'm going to hit apply. As soon as I do that, if I refresh this gadget, that should query the database and it should bring down the number by one, which it did. So that's just a quick example of how to get the, the gadgets tweaked. Um, if you have a bunch of boards that you only want to monitor a few, this is the place to do that. Uh, so there's no editing of scripts you have to do. It's all done via the module file. Uh, a little bit more about the outgrid here. You can uh, also filter it uh, by clicking this funnel icon and you can do custom custom field. Uh, say on this one, on the status column, you only want uh, to, to view new and open tickets. So we're going to click on custom and it's going to equal either new or Actually, we'll do and open. So if you see, it only brought in the filtered ones that are new or open status. So that's just a quick way, and you can remove filters down here. So that's a that's a quick way to do that. So that's that's uh, how the module generator works. We can now that we've got that set up. Say we've got it how we like it. Um, these gadgets, when they're uh, placed how they want and then closed, they actually write a file in a cache folder, and that's in the README as well. But uh, the nice thing about that is they'll remember size and location uh, preferences. Say you don't like the color to be green, you can change that to pink. Uh, and then um, we'll just set this up how we like, get the sizes. And once we've tweaked the dashboard and how we like it to look, we're going to close everything and then launch the dashboard again and see if they come back in the same spot they were at. And I'll show you. And I think we've got open close ratio hiding in the background. Okay, so let's. Uh, I'm going to set some of these to floating mode. They look a little nicer. Okay, so I like the look of that. Uh, I'm going to go through here and close everything. Uh, and once everything's closed, then we should be able to just <coughs> launch the the batch file, and they should all go back to the same spot they were before. And this works with the batch file. It also works with just clicking on the individual gadgets. So uh, what I would go from here is put the batch file in the startup folder, and we would be ready to go on reboot. OK, so that is the installation guide for the ConnectSmart trial and just gives you a, uh, a sample of what we have to offer and how to get uh, comfortable with the gadgets and how to tweak them. Uh, so we hope you enjoy this video and uh, look to hear from you soon.